Carmen. Man. How you doing? Good. Sorry, I took forever. No, no, no. It's fine. Hey, everybody's busy nowadays. Whatever you had to do, did you get it done? I did. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, yeah. And of course, of course. So um, I guess, I was, first of all, thank you for you know coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it. Of course, and, my pleasure. And then the uh, next thing I was going to ask you, so are you lo located in Canada? No, I'm in Los Angeles. I've oh, been here you're in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah, but I grew up in Canada. That's where I spent most of my competitive years. So. Gotcha. How is uh, Los Angeles with uh, the virus and everything? Well, from what I understand, we're pretty strict as far as in comparison with the other states, because mm -hmm. I live in Nevada, Colorado. They said it's pretty much normal and i'm like what <laughs> so i'm like i don't i'm just a hypochondriac i wear my mask as often as i can it's getting kind of old so now instead of always wearing it i'll keep it under my chin and if i walk by someone i'll put it up but right right yeah i mean i think i think the um the issue is is like whenever you're like close to somebody you know so as long as you're like far away from them i don't think it matters but you know within six feet or whatever you know the, the, yeah. or i'll just like walk like further <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it's it's crazy how who would have thought like right like uh, in march or so it started maybe you know a little earlier like we'd be here you know right now that's that's crazy yeah it's we're in the autumn now yeah and they're saying that uh now with the with the flu uh season coming up that it's probably going to get worse so you might want to double mask i don't know <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. I just don't go outside. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so how did you? Uh, so you're you're big into fitness and training and nutrition. How did you get into all that? Like, was it was it something that you you did from childhood, or is this something later on in life that you picked up? Right. I was never really into sports as a kid in elementary school. I was probably the second to last kid getting picked on a team. I wasn't very athletic and just really quiet and shy. Mm -hmm. And my older brother, he was into <laughs> bodybuilding. <laughs> he was heavy into bodybuilding and he'd have all these like muscle and fitness magazines, flex magazines. And so, you know, I'm a bored kid at home. I flipped through these magazines with Arnold in, in them and all these bodybuilders of the eighties and nineties. And so of course he's the older brother. I thought he was cool. Mm -hmm. And I've always, thought bodybuilding and muscle was cool. Then after high school, I was really concerned about not gaining the freshman 15. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to start working out. So that's what I did. And that's basically for me to stay skinny because that was a trend at the time. Muscle wasn't trendy. Right. And uh, I think when I started college, then I started dating this guy and he's like, well, why don't I buy you a gym membership? I'm like, okay, that's cool. So from then on, I haven't stopped going to the gym, but then it wasn't until several years later, I was going to Gold's Gym up in Vancouver and a few girls came up to me. They're like, oh, are you competing? And I was like, I, what, are you, what are you talking about? I don't know what that is. And so with more research, I'm like, I thought maybe I need to step it up a bit, change up my diet, train harder, mm -hmm. let's see what this competing is all about and that was so long ago 2006 was my first competition and oh, I didn't really? wow. well I was so discouraged and whatever but the lady I hired to guide me at the time she said you just got to keep trying and so she convinced me to enter more competitions and that's when in, my confidence started to build I'd get top three and from then on I just kept the momentum going so we should all thank that one boyfriend that you had in college for buying you that gym membership. And then from then <laughs> on, it, it kind of continued. <laughs> so, um, so you, so you kind of went into like competing. It was this in the NPC IVB field, like the organization. So I started off with this Canadian based organization called fame. I don't mm -hmm. think they're not in operation anymore. So I start from that and some small Canadian federations. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, switched over to Fitness America and Fitness Universe. And they were huge at the time. Even before I started, they were huge. They were ESPN. Oh, wow. 
models competed with them. I mean, old school names like Sherry Goggin. Um, I don't remember. There would right. be a time. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm not going to become an IFBB pro competing with them, even though it was super glamorous. So I did the NPC of Canada, which is a CBBF. So mm -hmm. I had to start at the bottom again, really, because I had to pay my dues. You know how that is in the yeah. competition. I just enter coming off from first place from a different federation and go into this one. They actually want to put you in your place. They want to put you like near the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's weird how that is. Right. Cause like in any other sport, it's, you know, it's, you are as good as you know, you are, that's where you get placed or that's where, where you compete. But in, in fitness, it's almost like there's a, like such a huge political aspect to it that it, even if you're really good or you, you look the same as someone else, you'll get placed lower or higher depending on, you know, the circumstances. So. True. And it's very strange. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't need to be humbled. I knew what I was getting into, but it still kind of had me scratching my head. I'm like, well, I don't <laughs> think I deserve third. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. whatever it is. And I just got to, you know, you always have to bring your best to the stage, even though they don't think it's the best or what have you. Right, right. So at that point, so what, what, how did you continue on? Did you, so did you win that, you know, those shows later or what happened? Uh, you know, when I switched to the CBBF, which is the NBC of Canada, it was, I actually, what did I do first? I think I did figure maybe, and oh, I was... Wow. Like in Canada, those girls are huge. But I just saw the bottom, which is like the novice level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I did actually pretty good in, because that was a novice level. But once I got to provincials, which is like state um, wide and then nationals, I totally got smoked. I think let's say there were like 15 girls. I probably got 13 out of 15 because I was small. <laughs> I also did fitness, which was freaking grueling. I don't. It was probably the worst thing I've done in terms of fitness because that really humbled me because I can't do gymnastics, I can't dance, but I don't know why someone convinced me to do it twice and no video of that will ever be seen in public. <laughs> I God. You should send it to us, we'll, we'll post it. <laughs> oh my God, if I could find it, I don't mind making fun of myself, but That's it's just funny. like, oh my God. So, so how, did that, how did that happen? Um, like you go into fitness without, you know, any kind of background in, in you know, like gymnastics or dancing, like, what did you do? Like, how, did you just kind of learn something on the go or? You know what it was? I think I was in the aerobics room stretching one day and I, I'm like super flexible. This lady's like, you should do fitness. You're so flexible. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. And then I think I tried to take some gymnastics classes. I don't know if I took any dance classes, but uh, I don't know. I didn't make do with what I got. So I had my flexibility. So I'd show off like my flexibility, but my jump sucked. I couldn't do any like <laughs> flip anything like, oh my God. <laughs> The, but, yeah, that's a that's a tough division uh, to be into, and because it's like you're not just trying to look a certain way; you're also, you know, doing the routines, and it's and that's where it gets a little rough in that in that division. All those girls usually have some kind of background in in gymnastics, you know. Yeah, and that's what makes them so amazing. It's like it's definitely not easy. Because not only do you have to train, you have to diet and practice your routines. And it's so hard on the joints. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you go, like you do all these divisions, pretty much every division possible. <laughs> and, yeah. the, and, the, and so at what point are you still, like, are you still competitive? Did you stop competing at a certain point? Like what, you know, what happened? My last show was Canadian nationals in 2013. Mm -hmm. And that was... 2012, I was super disappointed because I totally thought I was going to get my pro card. I got second place in my um, high class because I was so defeated and, you know, fit, competing had taken up so much of my life for those like seven, eight years. And I was just so done with it. And my friend, she's like, you know, just do it one more time. Do it for yourself, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, fine, let's do it. And I'm the type of person like, I'll 
train diet everything on the low but i won't tell anyone that i'm competing so if people will ask me are you doing nationals i'm like eh, i don't know i don't know what that was i just feel like i didn't need to broadcast it mm -hmm. anyways 2013 was my last show in bikini and i won my class and that's all i needed i'm like okay bye guys i'm done mm -hmm. um, so you just kind of ended it there you kind of lost the the fire to compete at that point yeah, because I think by then, 2013 had been eight years and mm. eight years, the first four or five years, I was doing four shows a year, which was a lot at that time. Yeah. Now we're eight shows a year and I'm like, I don't know how to do it. But um, yeah, I was toward the tail end. I had a sponsor for a couple of years and I think because I didn't turn pro, they let me go. And so I'm like, okay, well, things are getting costly to pay for my own flights and everything. So 2013 was the last year and I don't know, I, yeah. I know, and that's all I needed. I didn't yeah. need to prove anything. That, that's interesting. Um, I, I knew a girl, um, used to go to my gym a while back and she, she was like very into competing. She, I think she was in figure, she was doing well. And then I believe something happened where she got called out as the winner. And then they said, Oh, sorry we read something wrong you're actually in second place so that crushed her and at that point she just is done was done with competing but what's interesting is that when she was done with competing her her personal training and like coaching and stuff business just took off and it, it's you know it's sometimes it's, I hear both stories I hear people that like just love competing and just always want to do it and others that are like yeah it's cool but you know it's it's just not not what it's all cracked out to be you know so did you um so you i see that you know i, I did a little bit of um just background work so you do coaching and in fitness videos as well and everything like that i used to coach i used to train people but ever since i moved to la it's not I feel because LA is so saturated with trainers and especially mm -hmm. with Instagram, everyone has a program that they can sell. I just feel like, it's not like I don't feel that I'm special enough. It's just, I spent so much time in fitness and although I love it, it's my passion. It's just really draining, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Sure. You've, you, you, um, it's the best, you got burnt out on it, I guess, is the best I way to put it. I mean, I don't mind people asking me for advice and stuff, but mm -hmm. there's so much information out there. I just really don't have the patience mm -hmm. to have to answer, oh, well, I read this on the internet. Well, why did you say this? I'm like, yeah. everyone's on the internet and I just don't have the energy or patience. It's like people asking fitness advice from 10 different people. You're gonna get 10 different answers. Sure. So. Yeah. Do you think, what do you like attribute that to? Do you just attribute that to just a lot of like information on the internet that contradicts itself? And, or why do you think that is that everybody has so many different like viewpoints on how, you know, how to be fit, I guess the best way to put it. Okay. I feel like because it's such, such a generic answer, let's say you take a human being, let's say, they're in decent health. You don't know their medical history. You don't know their past injury history. So it's easy to give advice about person A when you think that they're an average person with no issues. But then take into account, okay, well, maybe this person has a hypothyroid. Then that changes everything in terms yeah. of what they eat, in terms of how much they train. So, yeah. yeah. It's just, it becomes just minutia in a way um so do you usually do you keep up with like uh any kind of like um like fitness like the olympia or the arnold or anything like that or you're kind of completely I, done with it i worked the olympia since maybe 2009 so every year i was at the expo and every year i would see a change and it used to be such a privilege to work the olympia expo like i would have worked it for free if mm -hmm. i needed to but it's changed a lot I don't really know who the top contenders are anymore at the Olympics except for the bodybuilders mm -hmm. 
I don't know who the bikini girls, I don't know, not many. It wasn't like how it used to be. I sound old, I'm dating myself, but <laughs> I still, yeah. the Arnold, yeah. But again, the yeah, internet well. is fitness people. Even like the IG influencers, the fitness people, they don't even, they don't have interest in the Olympia. It's a different world. So so um, now I guess there's not going to be anybody working the Olympia or anything right. else for that matter. Because it's, I think they're still having the show like in December, but there's not going to be, you know, anybody there basically. So no. as, far, as far as the like audience okay. members and things like that. Yeah. Well, it's good for, I guess, uh, companies that don't need to spend money on booths this year. Right. That's one of the things that they were, they were talking about how, how uh, much money these companies like spend on, on booths in the Olympia. It's, it's extraordinary amount. Yeah. Because they have to rent the booth, like have product there, have workers there. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, are your gyms now in LA open or no? The private ones are. The chain gyms like Equinox, 24 Hour, those ones aren't open. Do you still train? I do. I do my home workouts. It's obviously not the same as going to the gym, but they I make do with them. And maybe mm -hmm. like a couple times a week, I'll go to my friend's house because they have equipment. And so I'll train there. But do you um, like, are you train like with weights or are you just yeah. do like aesthetic type of, or not aesthetic? Um... Yeah, yeah, calisthenics. Sorry, it was slipping my mind. Oh, that's okay. It ends mm -hmm. with edics. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of edics. <laughs> yeah. Um, at home, I do calisthenics. I use like light dumbbells at five, eight pounds. I use my workout bands. But when I go to my friend's house, they have real weights. And that's when I like to like lift as heavy as I can because it's not like set in stone every week I go there. But it's mainly for leg days because I tend, my legs tend to atrophy if I don't train them heavy mm -hmm. but at home i don't really care it's my upper body so are you just uh, like just generally like a le like a lean person naturally yeah, probably skinny fat is more accurate <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say lean but sure we can do that <laughs> well, i wish i got skinny and lean but no i just get skinny and kind of like saw mm -hmm. it's just my genetics my parents are both chinese and we tend to be more skinny fat than lean mm -hmm. and they're just they have like Thin limbs or lanky. Mm -hmm. That's where I. I that um, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Chinese. I was just uh, before you. I had another show, and it was a girl from India, and we were talking about how like Asian markets are booming with fit, like fitness uh, competitors now. That now I've seen so many more like Chinese or Japanese or just in, in general Oriental Asian um, competitors now. Like they're just coming out of the woodwork. Is yeah, have you seen competitors, those girls are jacked. I'm like, yes. what is <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I never, you know, because I guess like just like you said, like a lot of us kind of like think that way. Um, at least, you know, in my mind, I've always thought like Asians being on the smaller end, the more petite, and and I mean, obviously, I know that that's a that's a huge you know, variations, a lot of people are talking about, but in general, that's how people think of stereotype stereotypically. Um, but, but when you see these girls, they're like, I mean, they're really muscular, you know? Yeah. I don't know how that is. And I feel like with different types of Asians, we have our own pros and cons, weaknesses and strengths. Sure. Koreans probably have better legs mm -hmm. than the rest of us. Yeah. Well, it's probably a little PED work there too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's there's a little bit of that too, a little um, a little uh, performance enhancing stuff involved. But yeah. still, even with that being the case, it's still tremendous genetics, like for whoever can do that, you know, to get to yeah. that level. So, um, so what do you like? What made you move to LA? I was going to ask you that. I forgot to ask you earlier. Oh, that's good. I was very tired of where I lived. I lived in Vancouver, mm. and. I just felt like no matter how hard I worked, no matter how many jobs I had, I could never get ahead because Vancouver is an expensive place to live. Mm -hmm. Probably the most expensive place to live in North America. Worse than Maybe. LA? It's pretty much on par because the taxes we pay are kind of high and the cost of living in Vancouver is high. I Actually, when I go visit, I look at a juice at Whole Foods. I'm like, this is 
eight dollars for a <laughs> bottle of gin. I'm like, and plus it add tax on top of it, I think. I mean, maybe not for juice, but other stuff like whatever. Right, right. I, I got you, I get your point. Yeah, that's that is pretty expensive. Um, so so you so you wanted to did you come down to like uh, for work or just because you were tired of living there? In Vancouver, but I just wanted a change of pace. And so I applied for a work visa, which is very stressful, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> From Canada? Yeah. Really? I thought they would it would easily get there. You would, not. That's what a lot of people think, but it's actually really hard to get a work visa unless you have some sort of big degree or you're like famous or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so I was like, okay, you know what? I do love fitness, but I really do love aesthetics and I love makeup. I love making people feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to LA, go to makeup school and figure things out. So first I came on a student visa and then when I went back to Canada and I applied for a work visa. So I'd wait until that was approved. I came back down and since then I've become a full-time makeup artist. Oh, wow. Luckily, That's cool. Um, I have been asked, I'm like, I just don't feel comfortable training anyone anymore because I haven't like kept up to what's up to date with nutrition and fitness. Mm -hmm. I know what's good for me, but it might not be good for someone else. Um, but I still feel like I'd know a lot more than many people out there. Like there's a, but there's one influencer. I won't say what her name is <laughs> also Asian. She has millions and millions of followers mm -hmm. on YouTube. And I've watched her videos and I'm just like, wow, this girl, her form is atrocious. Mm -hmm. but people love her. She yeah. must be doing something. It's interesting how that works, right? Because so I don't know if you're you do a lot of um, YouTube viewing or there's a there's a um, coach. His name's Coach Greg, Greg Doucette. And he does a lot of videos where he kind of just breaks people's uh, fitness videos down and just how um dumb they are and how really not true they are but but you'll look at them you look at the views and you look at the followers they have and it's i mean it could be hundreds of thousands it could be millions and you're like you you think to yourself like how is this even possible like how 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 can you have millions of followers but you're literally not saying anything worth of value like you know how's that even possible and it's, Say that again. They have money. They have money to buy uh, ad space on YouTube. They have mm. money to buy subscribe. I don't know. Yeah. That's, my That's what I think. Because yeah, I've got to pull that chick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think there's a there's a there's a financial aspect to it, like because you know it's that saying you have to have money to make money, and it's like in order to get all those followers, that it's it's um you know you're you'll need to be able to like maneuver within the social media, and a lot of that is just comes down to like you said buying advertisements, um you know obviously like Instagram and and Facebook they have ways that you can promote yourself, for, you know if you pay a certain amount, so you know all that all that, you know, inflates your followers as well. So. Absolutely. And it's disheartening because, you know, I, for me, if I'm following a workout video, I'd want someone who inspires me. But then again, if I don't know anything about fitness, I don't know anything about working out. That's what I think is proper when it's actually not. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's might be like common sense to us, but we have to kind of think about like us back in the day, we probably we could have fell into the same, you know, into the same situation, thinking that that's, that's how you get, you know, how you get results when, you know, when it's not at all, not even close. Exactly. I've been a victim of the cabbage soup diet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't heard of that one. What is that about? It's like, all you eat is cabbage soup. I don't even know. This is like an old school one again. If you're drinking soup all day, you're getting no nutrition, no fiber really is getting through except for the cabbage. So you're not really gaining any weight. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot of these diets, that's what they, that's what they base on. They reduce your calories significantly and, and you end up dropping weight. So it's like, it could be cabbage soup. It could be, you know, I'm, um, I don't know, just pick a random food and only eat, eat that food, you know, potato, yeah, like, potato a day or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, and, and uh, yeah, you'll get like results, you'll lose weight, but that's because you're just eliminating everything, but that one item. And, but that's, 
those things are not sustainable. You know, it's like, yeah, who's going to eat like that all their life? You know, no, I don't want to eat cabbage soup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean like eating chicken salad every day, but I do it because I know it's good for me and it gets, gets the results I want. Right. So you, you're, you're full time and uh, you said makeup is a makeup artist. So a lot of the work I do is with fitness models. I do other um, work too in terms of makeup, but for the most part, it's a lot of fitness models, a lot of fitness based uh, jobs. There's one fitness app I did a lot of work for for the past couple of years with some um, big name influencers and athletes. Mm -hmm. I work with different photographers who shoot a lot of fitness models. Yeah. So I, even though I try to flee the fitness scene, it still makes a way back into my life. Which... Yeah, that, That's what I was going to say. Um, you, you know, you were the first half of this podcast, uh, initially you're talking about how, how you completely, you know, left the industry and, and stopped, but then now it's like, you're doing, you're still in it just from a different, you know, angle from a different point of view. Yeah. So in that case, you know, I do thank fitness for all that's done and still doing for me, because honestly, if it wasn't for everything that I've done in the past, I wouldn't have the credentials I have to do what I do now. Mm -hmm. And being in front of the camera to behind the camera, I know how the models feel. So there's a, there's a way I can calm them down or give them reassurance or confidence. And I feel like that's helped them take better pictures. And it's, perhaps made the photographer or director have a better understanding of what it's like to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, now tell, uh, let's see, what can we do to get you into like makeup for like these big movies, like a Marvel, Marvel movie or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get into the, like a gig like that? I think you have to pay your dues. I can't just be like, hey, Marvel people. You're so <laughs> Hey, Disney. <laughs> yeah. Um, first, you have to be in the union. And I feel like a lot of the big name stars, they already have their makeup artists. I see. So they have yeah. like specific like people that would just follow them around, like wherever they go. Yeah. Specifically allocated to them. Yeah. Usually they're in the union, which means you're the artists are part of SAG or whatever. Mm hmm. And yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know how to break into that world. It's not easy. I think there's a lot of rules that you have to adhere to have a certain amount of union hours. I don't know. I'm just it's like too I'm, much for you. It's too much. I don't mind doing photo shoots. That's perfectly fine. But being on the set for 14, 16 hour days, I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm past it. Maybe if I was like in my early twenties and I was hungry, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do it. But now that I'm a bit older, it's like, well, I don't want to be on now set for six. Now you're in your late 20s. So yeah. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, late 20s, old lady past the, <laughs> past my prime. <laughs> that's, it, that's it. Yeah, it's uh it's interesting. It's like you think about uh people like that that work in those on in those like movie industry, um, you know, makeup and 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 directing and this and that, and then you forget that how much work like goes into that. They're there all day. Sometimes they like leave their families for months to go shoot on sets. And, you know, yeah. all the people, all the people that are, that are helping them go with them, you know? So it's, yeah, it's a tough job. Sometimes people don't realize it. But keep in mind, I mean, if Robert Downey Jr. was like, Hey, Karen, do you want to come with me to film the next whatever? Uh huh. Kaplan or whatever. And I would do it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. starting from the bottom, I, it's not, I won't, I won't say I'm opposed to it, but call me jaded or weary. I'm just, yeah. 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 So, so you're primarily just, just going to continue like working with like fitness um, people, models and photo shoots and things of that nature. I feel like that's what people know me for. And so yeah. I'll take it you know, any time of day, but if something else comes up, I'm more than happy to take that job. I've done makeup for CEOs. I've done makeup on commercials. So gotcha. my, my repertoire is just not limited to fitness. How do you, course, how, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And of course, like I feel to exceed and to grow, you have to dabble in other things too. So mm -hmm. I, while I do love makeup and stuff, 
fitness is in my heart and I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, have you thought about, uh, well, let me ask you this. How do you advertise? Like as a makeup artist, like what do you do to advertise? Is it word of mouth or something else? A lot of it is word of mouth actually. Mm, okay. Because it's kind of hard, you know, it's not like I'm selling a product and I could just post on Instagram and people around the world can buy it. Mm. I'm this one person in LA and there's only so many hours in a day. So it's sort of like, it's limited. Right. Um, how I advertise basically word of mouth. And I do have an Instagram for my makeup page and people, and that's basically for people contacting me for makeup jobs or just looking at my portfolio and see what I've worked on. Sure. And I'll tag that, you know, in this video as well, if you send it to me a little later. Awesome. Uh, so, okay. So at this point, I guess like competing is out of the question, solely focused on doing makeup, right? Focused on making money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's the way things are going. That sounds like a prudent plan. You know, people are losing their jobs left and right. So yeah, it's, it sucks because you just don't know what's in the future. And I don't know when my next job is going to be. I don't know when my next contract is going to be. So I'll pretty much take any job I can get at this point, especially with the COVID. Sure. So have you, has your um, business like slowed down or like picked up? Cause it's different, like for different people, like, like a lot of people will say, Oh, my business has slowed down or, you know, I, I was laid off or whatnot. And then others are like, Oh, it's booming during COVID. Like, so in your case, how was it? Well, when the restrictions were hit, I definitely didn't work for like a couple months. And then things started slowly picking up again. But with what I do, it comes in waves. So sometimes I'm super, super busy. And then other times I'm like, okay, what am I doing right now? Nothing going on. So it's like around the same again. Mm -hmm. um, bit slower, but it's starting to pick up. Gotcha. How do you, how do you, um, for lack of a better term, like how do you survive like in, with that kind of like model, you know, for your in, in the industry that you um, are in where you get a lot of work at one time and then you, you know you could go for months without having any type of work uh no frivolous spending <laughs> <laughs> um i do other stuff also i do some writing for a magazine called fitness girls oh, okay uh, like a cross between um, i'd say maxim slash sports illustrated so it has a lot okay. of fitness in there feature like different fitness articles um so i do some writing for them i do some modeling for them and any type of they refer me lots of work in terms of models when they have photo shoots <sighs> or with the instagram sometimes i get paid to post something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah yeah just any any way anyhow until the next job yeah yeah, yeah. so you have to be open yeah the many things, but have your, you know, uh, standards. Yeah. There's things it, that won't do. <laughs> say it again. I'm sorry. There's things that I won't do. Um, yeah. I mean, we don't have to go into that, but I could figure I could, I could have a, I have an idea of what you're referring to. So. <laughs> uh yeah so it's interesting because it's like um you know since i'm not like i'm just you know i just have a regular office uh job so but it's always um fun to talk to somebody that's like in la or like inter entertainment i would consider you like in the entertainment you know area because of, because of the work that you do with makeup and all that and magazines and so forth yeah um it's it they kind of have like a similar story it's like every like everybody's trying to make it until you know eventually they do i would say you i mean if you've got a successful like business already in hand you probably i would consider that making it but a lot of times like movie stars and stuff they'll be like working as um you know what do they call those uh waiters and waitresses and to, like barely making anything and yeah. majority of them don't don't you know don't make it at all and then every once in a while somebody will break through you know it's true. It's really rare because I, I see a lot, a lot of stories, like someone is in grinding, like trying to be an actor until they're like 35 and they get their big break at 38 and then everything explodes. You're super rich and famous. Then you have people that we don't even know about that move back to like Wisconsin after like 12 years in LA 
You know what yeah. I mean? And that's yeah. Bad. I, I feel like I can never be an actor, an actress, because one, I can't take the rejection. <laughs> and like, I really can't, I swear to God. And two, I can't act worth shit. And I can't even, even the last YouTube video I posted, I was watching myself, I was like, oh my, oh my God, so cringy. <laughs> so what, what is your, what is your, you, you have a YouTube channel? What is that about? Make yeah, it I well? saw a couple months ago. There's not really much on it. I post like my daily workouts on there okay. a couple times just because I feel like I'm already working out. And if someone wants to follow along workout on YouTube, they can do it with me in the yeah, comfort awesome. of That's very cool. Yeah. Have you, you know, a lot of people are doing these like makeup channels and stuff. Have you considered doing any of that or no, not really? Yeah, I wanted to, I don't know how to do it yet because I'm so inept at YouTube, but they have, you guys have different channels. Like you have like the workouts, the makeup, like the random stuff. Gotcha. So I've just, to do that the other night and I'm like I don't know what I'm doing I'm so confused <laughs> so yeah I do want to do I had a couple IG live makeups that I want to post on there mm -hmm. but I do want to do makeup like fun stuff not like typical like oh this is how you do a cat eye this is how you do I want to do fun stuff like okay putting on makeup drunk or having my friend putting makeup on me and I critique it or like doing it with like my opposite hand like fun stuff gotcha. not like gotcha not the typical things that everyone else is doing no, no, it's not. I don't want the blown up things. Like I'm already pretty, but I'm gonna put on some more makeup and look even prettier. No, like my thing, Armin, is like I want to be funny and make people laugh. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main premise of. I don't know if you looked at my Instagram lately, but I try to like divert attention away from sexy pictures. So I'll say something funny mm -hmm. and make people laugh instead of like, oh, yeah. she looks hot. Look at her tits or something like stupid <laughs> shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's um it's one of those things where it's like how do you want to like be perceived, you know, online? Because it's like once you're already perceived a certain way, it's hard to like get out of that, you know? So it's it's good to like uh like diversify kind of like yourself. You know, if you consider yourself as like a business, if you you can have like the really like attractive good looking photos but if that's only thing you have on your page like that's that's how you get branded you know and it, yeah it's it nobody, gets old yeah well then you're then you're forced to only do that like and then you it's really hard to do anything else you know so yeah it's like okay we get it you're pretty <laughs> and i cuz i comment on like my friends' pictures and stuff, and my friends are gorgeous. And I'm like, okay, I got it. You're pretty. Like, what else can I say? Oh, you're stunning. Right. And like, <laughs> like every picture, you just say the same things. Like, you're stunning. Same emoji. I'm running, I'm running out of compliments, you guys. That's it. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Well, hey, like, go ahead. The girl around, they put on like whatever next to nothing. They bend over. It's like believe in yourself and everything will fall into place the sun moon and the stars and like oh my god girl you're showing us all right with your ass in my face when i'm at the supermarket checkout line i'm embarrassed people see me like oh my god that's uh you know that's kind of so along with that with that whole shtick these like um magazines like kind of aren't doing as well because of the social media and stuff like that so you have like and not just magazines and in, in with um uh, like maxim and stuff like that but also like fitness magazines are almost all gone so like social media has kind of kind of eliminated the magazine industry you know completely like youtube instagram all that uh, is like have you noticed that oh a hundred percent yeah. I'm sure the magazines notice it too because the last several years I was working the muscle and fitness flex booth mm -hmm. and um, we were just like giving away magazines yeah. because it, a lot of magazines were on back order and like, the last couple of years I worked because uh, we used to give free sub subscriptions and then the last couple of years we stopped doing it we'd give the online versions people were like oh why don't we get a magazine we got it last year it's like do you know how much money muscle and fitness loses from giving you guys magazines for a full year? Yeah. Like, but yeah, there's definitely a decrease in subscription rates. Advertising, I'm sure it's gone down because people want to advertise on Instagram and YouTube. It's just a changing time.
Sure, sure. Yeah, it's it, it's completely different now. And all these companies that have like invested in magazines, the, all the, all those are just going downhill, you know, by the minute. So, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's it, there's a little nostalgia to it in magazines that I liked. But at the same time, you can't deny the fact that I could look at a thousand photos like that, you know, on my phone and, you know, and I don't need to buy a real magazine put in my hand. So. Yeah, but back in the day, being in a magazine was a big deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like front cover, or you were—it was everything. Oh, so. yeah. Like maybe ten years ago, I don't know how long ago, but every girl wanted to be in Oxygen magazine. If you're in muscle and fitness, you're like, "Whoa, you're big time." Yeah. Now it's, like, it's so different. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Karen, thank you. I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I appreciate everything, you know, coming on the show. All right. That sounds great, Armin. Thank you. Right, take care. Bye-bye.